Good afternoon, channel, and welcome to this episode of Between the Sundays. We are so blessed to have you here with us on this devotion, and we want you to know that you're important to us and that we pray that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. So with that, I want to get right into our, our weekly devotion. As I was preparing for Wednesday's devotion on Monday, I came across several scriptures that I thought would be great for the devotion, but I wasn't feeling it. I, I wrote it out, but it just seemed like something was missing. So by the end of the day, by the end of Monday, I really felt like I had nothing. So I figured I was just going to try again on Tuesday. And Tuesday morning comes along, and I'm in the Bible, and I'm reading, and I'm seeking, and I'm reading this, and I'm reading that. But still, I wasn't able to grab hold of anything. There were some things there, but I just didn't feel right with it. I just figured, after I get off of work, I'll read some more. Well, I did that, and I still wasn't feeling anything. I didn't know what I was going to do for you guys today. And then I started to become desperate, and I found myself reading Leviticus and Psalms and Nehemiah, and it got so bad that I started reading the book of Numbers. I was wondering if I should even just skip this week's devotion. Reasoning with myself. I was reasoning with myself thinking maybe God doesn't want me to do a devotion this week. You know, it's amazing what your mind would think up to find ways to shift the blame to God. So as the day, as, as day two, as Tuesday was coming to a, a close, I knelt beside the bed and I began to pray. I was asking God first to forgive me for thinking that, 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 he didn't want his word shared for the week. And then I asked him to help me. Lord, help me find a devotion that you want me to share. And so I opened the Bible again and I started reading a little bit further. And then I came across Matthew 16. Where this is right after Jesus and the disciples. They just came across the lake and they were all hanging out. And Jesus asked his disciples a question in verse 13. Who do the people say that the, man, the Son of Man is? In, in verse 14, it says, Well, they replied, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, But who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John. Because of my Father in heaven... He revealed this to you. You didn't learn this from any human being. Now, I say to you, you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Now, I've read this scripture time and time again. And this scene, this scene has been played out in every major movie about Jesus. But there was a difference the difference was that this time I felt sad about it. You see, God revealed through Peter the answer. You are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus embraced Peter's answer. And he said that you are blessed. Peter got blessed because of that. Now, what made this revelation so upsetting to me that it had me sitting in silence for a time. It was the fact that in just a few chapters from now, Peter's denying that he ever knew Jesus. I said I don't know him! The fact, in his moment of distress, where he was distant from Jesus because Jesus was already taken away, and Peter was faced with the possibility of death, Peter became self-consumed in his own survival, trying to figure out ways to get himself out of this situation, forgetting that Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of the living God. He must have been filled with panic and fear. He forgot about Jesus and thought only of himself. I wasn't sad. I wasn't sad so much because Peter did this. I was sad because I've done this. Through this quarantine and the coronavirus, have you found yourself distant from God, trying to figure out your way through this pan pan uh, pandemic? I mean, I myself... I'm making sure that I'm six feet away from people and I'm making sure that they're six feet away from me. 
you know, it, it, it's gotten to the point, don't touch this, don't touch that, don't touch your face, wash your hands every chance you get, gotta wear a mask now, it's almost mandatory to wear a mask. You know, and the other thought I had was, before the quarantine, our church always started at 1045. Are you tuning in at 1045 on Sundays to watch? Or are you watching service when you have some free time? I don't know. Does it really matter what time that uh, what time we tune in for church? Yes, I think I think that sacrifice matters. Why? Well, it is just human nature to be self-consumed. It is the root of who we are. Do you know that that what we're saying when we do that? Do you know what we're saying when we act this way? What we're saying when we become self-consumed? We are spiritually saying, I never knew him. In Matthew 5, 36, it says, do not swear by your own head. You can't make even the hair white or black on it. Even the promises that I make for tomorrow are flawed. So then I asked God a question. And I asked, I asked the creator of the universe a question. The one who spoke light into existence. The God that when he speaks, demon flee. The God that spoke to dry bones and brought them to life. The God that said that, I, that his word will not come back void. I asked him a question. And I said, Lord, I'm no better off than Peter. My words are worthless without you. My words are worthless outside of you. My promises carry no weight. I have, uh, I have fallen. We all have fallen short of you. Lord, answer this question. Who do you say I am? You see, the prodigal son in Luke 15, knowing his mistake, headed home to his father and was prepared to be slapped by the father. But instead, he was received and embraced. We also receive embrace as we head back to the father. So God did answer my question. He said, who do I say you are? You, my child. You are love, according to John 3.16. You are mine, according to 1 John 3.1. You are worthy in Zechariah 3.17. You have a purpose in Jeremiah 29.11. You are called by his name in Isaiah 43.1. God is saying that we are important to him, so important that he sent Jesus to die on the cross so he could redeem you, redeem me, and redeem everybody. That should be reason to praise God. Remember, because of what Jesus did on the cross 2,000 years ago, we are not the mistakes that threaten to define us. He has forgiven us of our past. His desire is to be with us. And if, if, we, if we continue to draw near to God, if we continue to draw close to Him, we will witness a layer of who we are as He sees us not as we see ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're new to the channel, can you hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are released? And why not leave a comment below? You know, we would love to hear from you and share all the incredible things that God is doing here. And remember, God is making us more than a church. He's making us a family.